turn on the Apple One? So, uh, well, I just turned on the TV, which is my, my monitor, uh, you know, and we can just flick this switch right over here in our custom power supply here. And here we are. And it's an Apple One, so anyone that knows how to use an iPhone knows how to use this. You just touch your apps. And, <laughs> well, it doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> so how many Apple Ones do they sell? Uh, so there were 200 Apple Ones uh, in the first, uh, you know, like, build fest in Steve Jobs' garage or whatever. Uh, about 100 of them got turned back into Apple IIs. Uh, there was a trade-in program. So you would buy an Apple One for $666.66. It's not satanic. It's just a repeating number. And Steve uh, Wozniak really likes repeating numbers. So uh, if you sprung an extra 75 bucks, you could get a program loader card here. And you might recognize, I don't know, you're holding an Apple device, so you might not know what these are. Uh, but I'll let you take a guess. I mean, it looks like an audio port of some type. Yep. Headphone jack, but oh, you don't have one anymore. Okay. Right? Uh, so anyway, maybe get one of these. Get out your favorite album. Here's Apple One Integer Basic. Pop it in here, it's very metal. Type in a memory address and uh, L for load. Plug these two headphone jacks into those two headphone jacks, and then hit enter, and then hit play, and you'll see this light flash if your volume is set right, and if it's not, go back and fix it and do it again. Uh, and hopefully 30 seconds later, you have loaded integer basic, and then you type the memory address again, and an R for run, and hit enter, and hopefully you are running integer basic at that point. You probably remember dial-up internet? Yeah. You ever pick up the phone? Right, the tones. So that fuzz and tone and crap that you would hear when you picked up the phone when you're on the modem is very akin to what's going on here. Uh, we don't need to look at the replica, though. If you want to see a real Apple One, there is one right here. Oh, wow, you actually have one. So this is wow. Apple One number 10. It's the 10th to go on display in the world, I think, so lots of 10s lining up or something like that. A uh, hundred of these got traded into Apple IIs uh, by customers. Uh, 60 of them remained, 40 of them were probably just tossed. What, what is this in the suitcase? So your computer, here's an advertisement for an Apple One. You just buy the motherboard. It's the first computer Apple ever made. They didn't sell you a case. So you had to supply your own case, your own keyboard, your own power supply, your own TV or monitor or whatever. Everything else had to be supplied by you. So the guy that bought this, by no fault of Apple, accidentally built himself the first MacBook because he wanted to take his Apple on the road. And so this motherboard came out of this briefcase? Yeah, you can, you can lift up the keyboard and install this underneath. And then the keyboard plugs into, you can actually see the port that says keyboard right on the motherboard there. I wonder what this guy used it for. I mean, he was really cutting edge. Oh, there's the, the input. Yeah, the tape input and output. So you would, have, you would still have that card mm -hmm. uh, and then just run wire. that to an extension cable or something like that. Here is what it looked like installed. So this is a very interesting sort of cir uh, circular, like cyclic thing. Uh, this artwork is drawn by a guy that used to be involved in Apple, Ronald Wayne. Ronald Wayne was the third guy in Apple, but exited a couple weeks after they opened because, well, I don't know if this thing, the computer thing is gonna take off, uh, you know, like it's, and, and he was a family man, uh, you know, so he had a family and a mortgage, uh, well, he didn't want to mortgage out his house and, you know, like that sort of thing, he thought they saw it as too much of a risk. So he backed out and uh, he was originally gonna be, you know, uh, one of the, uh, the older gentlemen in, in the ragtag group of, you know, like the Steves were young right. and, uh, you know, relatively green to the industry still and whatever, and Ronald was more experienced and also a very good artist. I can see. Uh, so, you know, he, uh, the original Apple logo, which you probably saw in here, uh, was drawn by him. No, I missed that. You can see it right on the front of the manual there. Oh, wow, that's the original logo? Yeah. You can also see it on that litho slide in the front. 
wonder why they have so i mean an original apple one that's got to be worth over a million dollars right uh, if you're a fan of eBay, sure, but uh, I would say that eBay is not the determination of market value of an item. Okay. Uh, this one went for less than that, and that's good because otherwise we wouldn't have someone that owns this building anymore. Well, His wife probably would have killed him. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's an especially cool di like version of one to have it in the briefcase. Yeah. Uh, Arguably, in my opinion, as a person who is not a big fan of Apple, I, I, I got me that. Wrong, I think that <laughs> Waz was a genius, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, like I don't, uh, and, and Waz is still around and he still is a genius, I'm sure, you know, but uh, like the real, the, the cool thing about this whole setup or the thing that makes this, in my view, the coolest Apple one, that's maybe a better way to say that. Um, is that this is possibly the first laptop form factor computer that I've ever been able to find or Google or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's really neat. And this would have been, you know, 1975, 1976. Uh, and portable computers around this time are luggables. So, uh, you know, they're like, they look like luggage or suitcases, not briefcases. Yeah. Uh, or like you know, portable sewing machines or whatever. What they and then you've got a Lisa here. We do. That's neat. That is a prototype Lisa one with the Twiggy drives. We also have a Lisa two with the three and a half drive, and that one powers up. So it's a substantial Apple uh, portion of the collection here. Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a decent Apple back here. There's also kind of an IBM section over there. Uh, we've got some Japanese stuff behind that. Oh, that's um, awesome. There's Next. Yeah. The next I've never two. seen one in person. Look um, at this. Really, the two cool things to come out of Next that most people would recognize are, one, that they got Unix running on the Next, and the Next arguably is a fancy Mac uh, in a, black, a cool black case. Um, but, you know, it's 68030. It does have a DSP chip, uh, which does deserve some recognition. But, uh, you know, the rest of the machine is still kind of, you know, like it's, it's really just a super expensive Mac. But getting Unix drawn on it was, you know, no, sh uh, no small task. I just want to see um, the mouse. And you could probably blame the next systems as the reason that we ended up with Unix on the Mac. I've had a lot of these products here. I think this oh, is no, probably early Xerox. Early Xerox computers. So there's that one. But you might want to look at this Xerox machine. Uh, if you've one ever heard here? of, so this is the machine and this is, yeah, the monitor keyboard, mouse cord keyboard. This is a Xerox Alto. You might notice that it has a portrait display. Uh huh. Why do you think that is? I don't know. So what kind of a company is Xerox? Oh, it's to mimic an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper? Or? Exactly. Okay. So they wanted a computer that would offer you a what you see is what you get experience and why not give you the exact sheet of paper on your screen? So was this the first WYSIWYG uh, Computer? It is usually credited for that. This, this is the is one. The Alto. So this is the yeah. one that Steve Jobs saw at the park and uh, like yeah, inspired and him. Saw Bravo and he was like, "This is the coolest shit I've ever seen. I'm gonna dedicate the next 20 years of my life to cloning this and whatever." <laughs> and that's how the Lisa and the Mac end up on the market. And Incredible. Whatever. So this, yeah, this. Does is this that. thing turn on? It does. It's one of uh, three that you can turn on in the world, so that's kind of cool. I've always wanted to see this. I can't believe I'm seeing this here. Uh, I don't know if I have Bravo on it, but we got Missile Command playing if you want to play some of that. So it takes this whole computer so this here. This is a five meg hard drive, I think. Uh, and this doesn't spin up. So we actually have uh, a Beagle board dangling off of the bottom back of it that emulates the hard drive. Okay. Uh, Xerox is also not only credited with the WYSI wig machine, I'm sure you've heard of the Douglas Engelbart demo, uh, mother of all demos. Tell me about it. So that is, you know, Doug is working on a prototype machine. He's like, you might soon 
have this little wooden box that you move around that might have some micro switches on it and whatever and everyone's like Doug you're high you know but then Xerox clones it into the Alto and obviously it is a good idea right um, and we wouldn't be using computers and mice still if mm -hmm. it weren't a good idea so Doug was on to something so he was the creator um, of the mouse uh, the, the... and sort of the GUI Oh, okay. Uh, you know, his Mother of All demo, just uh, search YouTube for Mother of All demo. Um, so I believe it is. Look at that. So I think we can just like. Hang on. You want me to hold the camera and you can play? All right. That'd be great. <laughs> It's really hard to, you know, oh, we, we had graphical machines before this, right? We had vector monitors on those PDPs in the 60s. This is this is now the 70s, so we've already seen graphics on computers. Okay. Uh, but this is the one where you can interact directly with the graphics. It gives you an environment to, you know, use the computer. So I'm not, I'm not seeing a cursor, so it's all with so the So it is. It's, it's oh. up here. Uh, it should move. You, yeah, I mean... Yes, don't don't be shy like drag that mouse around oh oh you got to press down a little bit yeah it's a look on the bottom it's a metal ball yeah it's not optical or anything oh like that gosh. so yeah oh that's amazing so uh okay. the buttons on your mouse are your turrets so to fire from the left you use the left button to fire from the right you use the right button and you start a okay, one player so game with one, one So, so here you go. One. So it's going to start? Yep. Aim at things, click. Boom. Oh, wow. Don't forget, you have more than one turret. So when you're on the right side of the screen, fire okay. with the right. And you want to oh. keep those missiles from hitting your cities. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm not very the good. The aliens are just a distraction. Oh, you got to shoot. You just want to focus on these. Uh... Yeah, and you want to focus on the end of the missile. <laughs> I'm really bad at this game. Did they actually then sell many of these, or it was just a... So, they, they didn't... It was a commercial failure, and Xerox didn't really want to put much promotional power behind it. You can see a purchase price up on the poster. You know, they were any from anywhere from 30 to 70 grand. Uh, this was 30 to 70,000. Wow. Yeah. So, and that's in 1970 dollars. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, that's got to be probably close to a quarter million. Yeah, it's... Uh, Thank you. Yeah. What an experience. No I can't believe I got to actually touch one of these. Your score's in one of the top ten. You want to save it? I don't know if it'll actually save it.